Thank you very much. Shall we pray together? Our Father and our God, we bless you again this morning. We thank you for your loving kindness. <clears throat> we thank you for the help we have received from you. We thank you for the time of prayer. And we thank you for so much that you are bringing to us even as we press on with this particular Congress. We ask, oh God, this morning that you send forth your word to us and let it mix with faith in our hearts. We ask, Lord, that you will arise on our behalf and show us what kind of men and women we ought to be while we are yet young. What must we focus upon now that we are young so that the coming days, the expectation of our lives will never be thwarted. Thank you, Father. Please help us as we go ahead right away in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to <clears throat> thank the Lord for this time and for the way that God has uh, led us particularly as we began yesterday night to look at what you must do now that you are young and what you must avoid while you are yet young. But this morning I intend <clears throat> that we shall go ahead and look at what kind of person you ought to be while you are young. And we're going to read some few passages together as the Lord will be permitting us. I would like you to turn your Bible with me. We'll read Psalm 144. <coughs> we take Psalm 144 and we take from verse 11 up to verse 15 as the Lord will permit us. And then we shall look at Jeremiah chapter 1 and then we return to our text which is 2 Chronicles chapter 34 that we have been working at. Will I ask you to please go to Psalm 144 and we take from verse 11. Read me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouth speaketh vanity and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace, that our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in, no going out, that there be no complaining in our street. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yes, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. That's Psalm 110, I mean 114, I mean 144, and verse 11. And can you quickly come along to Jeremiah chapter 1? And let's read Jeremiah 1 together. I'll read from verse 5. Maybe I should read from verse 4. I'll get it as far as verse 10. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee 
and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Again, may the Lord bless his word to our hearts as we begin to study together this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Now, one of the first things that I perceive the Lord we want me to focus upon this morning is what kind of person you ought to be while you are young. The first thing I saw as I look at the life of Daniel, I mean Jeremiah, when God brought that word to Jeremiah, God said to Jeremiah that before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then he said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child, I am a youth. If you take that scripture from the New King James Version, he said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, because I am a youth. Then the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. The first thing I want to note with you is that you need to be a young man with a sense of destiny. One of the things that will first of all direct your purpose in life that will help you to maximize every opportunity that God will bring your way is for you to first have a sense of destiny. I'd like you to know that you are, you are born to fulfill a purpose. You were born to contribute something deliberate, something definite to your generation. I want you to know that you are not a mistake. Even if you are not able to trace the mother that gave birth to you, or you are not able to know who exactly was your father. That does not in any way say that you have no reason for being alive. God was speaking to Jeremiah here. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. Now, it is not only Jeremiah that God 
say that kind of thing to, so that you will not say, well, and it was Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a peculiar person. For me, I was just born like that. I want to inform you that there is no one of you that God has allowed to come on the earth without a definite purpose. There is a definite assignment that God wanted your life to fulfill. Now, if you go to Isaiah chapter 49, you come across another thing like this. In Isaiah 49, I'll read verse 1. Listen, O coastland to me, and take it, you peoples from afar off. The Lord has called me from the womb. From the mattress of my mother, he has made mention of my name. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me. Again, you are noting here, he said, the Lord has called me from the womb, from the mattress of my mother, he has made mention of my name. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. Now, if you go to um, Galatians chapter 1, I'm just trying to help you see that all those young people that maximize their youthful life and enter into their destiny in life, they were first and foremost people who lived with a sense of destiny. They did not see themselves as people who live by chance. They did not see themselves as people who are just existing for the sake of existing. And they were not just there to make up the crowd. That's the first thing I really pray that the Holy Spirit will bring across to you this morning. Many, many people waste away their lives simply because they are not in touch with a sense of purpose. They are not there with a sense of purpose. So anything can borrow them aside. Anything can pull them wherever they want. Because they did not understand that I am actually sent on errand. I'm actually living to fulfill a destiny. Now, if you look at Galatians chapter 1, you will see again Paul speaking in this same manner. Please turn with me to Galatians chapter 1. And I want you to read from verse 13. From verse 13, it says, For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure, and I tried to waste it. And I advanced <coughs> in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. Now, what am I saying here? All the people that will make the most of their years, particularly while they are yet young, something must strike them. It is the sense of destiny. When I kept talking about Joseph yesterday, one thing that was very strong in the life of Joseph was as young as he was, he began to have dreams of the destiny that God has for him. Do you know that if you're a careless youth, who only occupy yourself with themes and things that is around, 
your dreams will be nonsense. You will just be dreaming about uh, swimming inside water and all the kind of things that you see yourself doing. All because you have never focused on what is the reason, what is the destiny that God set for me. What was I born to be? What was I born to accomplish? What was I born to carry out in my own generation? As far as Paul was concerned, he said, when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, even though he started, you know, in a way that you would say, ah, it's injurious, he was persecuting the church, but as far as he knew, he thought that that was the way he was going to fulfill his destiny. May I say to you, it is better to be a man with a sense of destiny, and even if you are making a mistake, you'll be making that mistake with a sense that you are achieving a purpose, than to be a man who lives for nothing, who wakes up thinking about nothing, who dress up in the morning just to go around on the street. It is such a person that Satan easily derails. There are such persons that Satan easily gives another agenda to pursue in life. So the first question that I would like to lay before you as I build on who you are supposed to be. First, is that you are not born just for a, just by chance. You are not born just to roam around in life and to die. There's something you were born to accomplish. Actually, the Lord Jesus Christ said, offenses must be in the world. But woe to him through whom offense has come into the world. It were better he was not born. I want to say to you that you are not born to bring offense to your generation. You are not born to add to the problem of your generation. You were born and preserved and kept alive because there's a divine expectation. There's a divine assignment. There's a destiny that God has set for your life. Now, when should you discover that destiny? Is it when you are old? Is it when all your years are wasted? Then you now wake up and say, oh, this is the reason why I was born. And I was not. I never lived for it. I never understood it. That would be very unfortunate. I want you to know that for you to determine what you are born and preserved to do while you are young is a great necessity. It is not to be left until when you have gone to maybe the 50s and the 60s. Yes, there are people that either by virtue of what has happened to them, they never encountered the Lord Jesus in their life, it's only at 50, at 60, that the word of God came to them. It was then they started asking, Oh God, what was I born to be? And why must I born? am I being born again now? And they are beginning to discover, Oh, this is what you need to have lived your life for. You wasted 49 years. And I could see such persons and say, like the man that wrote that in song, in, Say, must I go empty-handed? He only came to the knowledge of the truth when he was about dying. And he was saying, it is, when I think back, all the years that I've wasted, all the years that I've squandered, what will I appear before God with? The song he wrote, that was his final thing he could do. But that song has been a blessing to many people today. All I'm asking you to note is that every young man that 
was going to become something useful in the hand of God, they discovered it while they were yet young. Now, let me show you furthermore. I'll show you something more. When Jesus Christ was young, I'm looking at him as a young person now. In Luke chapter 2, we were told that he went to the temple together with his parents. Please go with me to Luke chapter 2. And if you get to verse 42, it will give you the story of how Jesus went with his parents to the temple for the feast of Passover. Then he was 12 years of age. But what I wanted to note was when his parents have left him in Jerusalem and they have gone on a journey. And after three days, they came back looking for him. And they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Verse 48. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Even at 12, he had already started to know what is the reason for his existence. Why did he come here? In the book of Hebrews chapter 10, if you can go with me to Hebrews 10, you will again see something there quickly. The Bible said in verse 5, Therefore, when Jesus, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you are prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. Now, the first issue that I felt I must confront you with. Do you have a sense of destiny? Is it clear to you that you were born to fulfill a purpose? Is it clear to you that you are not just existing just to exist? Do you know that you are not just sent to the world to make up the number? Do you know that God actually is deliberate? God was particular and is specific about you? And that what happens to you, what you become in life, what you accomplish with your time, they are all in God's divine arrangement. And it is for this that he has been pursuing you he has been keeping his eyes upon you. He has been watching over you. So the first thing I saw with Jeremiah, I saw in Isaiah, I saw with Jesus, I saw with Paul. The same thing I have seen with Moses. The same thing I have seen with somebody like Samuel. The same thing I have seen with somebody like, like Esther. Because later on, the Bible said, Mordecai said to Esther, who knows whether it is for this kind of time that you have been brought to the kingdom. Which meant that all the things that God has orchestrated around your life, they were meant to, to fulfill a purpose. If you look back and you could even tell your short story, if you are still young, you will notice that there are peculiar, peculiar uh, 
guideposts that you could look at and you say, could it be that God is just positioning me because of what he wanted my life to be in my generation? So, for a child, for a young man, not to waste away, the first thing you must be, you have to be a man of destiny while you are yet young. I'm not saying you will not discover your destiny when you are old. I'm not saying you may not wake up when you are now 50 and you say, oh, I was not supposed to be this. I was supposed to be that. And you now start looking for how to be trained to be that thing when you only have a few more years to die. But I wish to say to you that whatever God was going to use you for, it is very, very advantageous if you will discover it now that you are young. Now that the evil day has not come. Now that you have not made mistakes. Now that you have not squandered your opportunities. How I wish you get to know why has God preserved you. And this is very critical why you are yet young. The reason is because if you know why you are born, if you know the destiny God has set for you, if you know the purpose that you are supposed to pursue in life, then you'll be able to concentrate all your strength, all your graces, all your potentials, all your opportunities to focus on it. But if you don't know this, you are likely to waste your opportunities, you are likely to dissipate your potentials, and you are likely to misplace yourself in what you are pursuing in life. Now, when God said, before I form you, I knew you. This is very critical, and I wish God will allow you to keep that in your mind. That God is not making a mistake about you. And wherever you are sitting, wherever you are today, whether you're alone or you're in the company of people, I want you to know that God is actually focusing on you as if there's no one else. I want you to know that God is speaking to you as you. He's speaking to you as you, you. God is not talking to a crowd. God is particularly saying, do you know there are certain things you need to accomplish within the time space that God has allocated for you in life? And there was a time for everything. There's a time for every object and everything you are supposed to accomplish in life. God is giving you space for it. And it is in this connection, I like to say, learn not to waste your opportunities and your time because it is for such a reason that God has allowed you to come into life. I realized that that same sense of destiny was with Joseph. When he finally, finally discovered himself back to his brothers and they were all crying, they were weeping. He said, please don't be, don't, don't be annoyed. God sent me ahead that he might preserve your lives. God sent me ahead so that the kind of thing that was going to happen in the whole world, you will not be trapped. He was a man who knew that whatever God allowed, it was working out together for his good. Now, if you started to know what's your destiny, what am I created for? Now, you will have asked me a question, sir, how do I know it? That's the first question that is very critical. How will you know what you are created for? Who is the best person to tell us what is the purpose for making a particular pot? Can you answer me? 
who is the best person that will tell us what do you have in mind for making this pot in this particular shape? Is he not the potter? Is he not the potter? That's why the first person you need to seek in order to discover your purpose in life is to seek the one who makes you, made you. Is to seek to know him so as to find out what does he have in mind for making you. When I began to discover this and I began to pursue the knowledge of God for my life, I was also young and I was asking, Lord Jesus, why did you make me? Why was I born into the family where I was born? Because I was not born into a Christian family. I was born into a family where nobody went to church. In fact, in my family, there are chronic, chronic idol worshippers. And my father was a, a, a very professional herbalist, serving demons. I was dedicated to serve demons. But Jesus came and saved me. So I was asking, why did you pull me out of here? There were questions upon questions. Sometimes my father would be talking to me and say, excuse me, don't make a mistake. God must have known why he decided to pull me out of this place. I began to find out why was I born? Why was I preserved? What was I supposed to do? I expect that so that you don't waste your life doing many things. You don't waste your life drifting. You must get to know the maker. You must get to know him who fashioned you from your mother's womb. That's why the first thing that Josiah did was that he began to seek the Lord. He began to seek to know the Lord. If you don't seek to know the Lord, my brother, how will you know the purpose for which you were born? How will you know what he designs you to be? How will you know? And how will you know in time what you ought to be doing? So my first request, for you to know your destiny, for you to know the purpose that was proposed even before you were born and brought forth, and for you to know what is the peculiar thing about your life, you must get to relate and to know him who made you, who fashions you, who crafted you, even when you knew nothing. And it is when you have set him before you that you will never make a mistake in life. So before I go from there, I want to ask you, have you come to know him who actually knew you from your mother's womb? Have you given your heart to seek the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, you must have a purpose in mind why you created me. You must have a desire why you have preserved me. What was I supposed to be? What was I supposed to be pursuing? What was I supposed to concentrate my life on? You know when Daniel said, I will not define myself, he was speaking as a man who knew what he was meant for. His own classmates, age mates, they were getting, they were eating the delicacies of the king, they were getting drunk, they were drinking wine, but yet this boy said, eh -eh, I will not define myself. He proposed that I will not do so. Now people are wondering, what kind of person are you? How can you alone be saying you will not defy yourself when all of us are here? He said, well, all of you can do that, but I cannot. Others may go, but I cannot go there. That's the way a man who understands his destiny uh, discusses. So I want to ask, have you sought to know the Lord? Are you seeking to work with God? Have you said Jesus as the first in your life? And have you started asking that very, very important question that Paul asked 
as soon as Jesus met him on the road to Damascus. After Jesus encountered Paul, and he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said to him, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Do you know the next question is asked? What will you have me to do? Two important questions that every young man must be able to get an answer for while you are yet young. Who are you, Lord? A personal knowledge of God. A functional knowledge of the Lord. An inquisitive pursuit of God. Lord, who are you? I want to know you. I want to touch you because Daniel said, those who do know their God, they are the ones that will do exploits. They will be strong. Now, the second question that Paul asks, Lord, what will you have me to do? What will you have me to do? That question, you need to ask it, not when you are nearing your grave. I think you need to ask that question even before you accept a married proposal from a man. I wish all the young ladies hearing me, you find out what God will have your life be before you lock in with one man. I wish as a brother, you will find out what will God have me do in life before you begin to look for who to help you achieve it. All these are very critical questions that you need to first deal with in order to accomplish the purpose of God. And this has to happen while you are yet young. I do not say that when you become old, when you become um, advanced in age, that you cannot ask such questions. But I know you can ask such questions, but it might be too late. I met a man who was 69 years of age, and he came to, to Kasnala where I was lecturing many years ago. And I was wondering that he said he came to preach in Africa at 69. I had to lodge him in my house. And I was wondering why is this old man coming at this age to come and preach the gospel in Africa? When I got sitting down with him, I discovered that he said when he was 25, God began to speak to him. You have a, a, a destiny to fulfill for me in Africa. You are supposed to be a missionary. But what did he do? He said, Lord, let me first make business. When I have enough money, I will send myself. God said, no, nobody sends himself into God's work. Rise up and go. He gave all the excuses. He started business. The business seemed to be flourishing. But just when he would have a breakthrough, everything would scatter. Because he was working against the destiny that God has for him. So at 69, he said, he now knows there's nothing he could do. He has tried everything in life, and they are not succeeding. So he was coming. Well, I tried to support him. When he's preaching, I see him coughing all the time. I quickly go and give him water. And I was praying, Lord, don't let this man die in my house. Because we didn't know what to do with it. I'm asking you, even if you are going to do the will of God, not when you are already cut out of the grave, not when your strength are exhausted. The Bible said it is better to bear the yoke in your youth. If you are going to bear the yoke to serve God, if you are going to bear the yoke to do something in your generation, it is not when you are exhausted. He must be a man who understands his destiny, the reason why he was born. And for you to do that, he must be a man that began to know the Lord while he is yet young. So the reason why you see me emphasizing your personal knowledge of God at this point is because if you don't know the Lord now, you are not likely to know the reason why you are born. You are not likely to know your destiny. You are not likely to know how to achieve it. 
Now, before I go from that point, and I want you to return back to the Psalm 144 that I have asked you to read. I will be, I will be moving in between those two passages before I find a way to get uh, to look at the life of Josiah again in comparison with some of the youth that we are talking about. Now, in, in Psalm 144, please, all of you go back to Psalm 144. Psalm 144, please, all of you get back there for me. It will be good. He said, read me, deliver me from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Now you wonder why I needed to include that verse. I want you to know that as a young man, you are not living in a vacuum. As a young brother, as a young sister, you are not living in a vacuum. You are living in a world that's already invested, contaminated, confused with all kinds of ideologies, all kinds of people, all kinds of young people. And one of them is what the Bible is saying here. He said, read me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. Other version may say foreigners, other version may call them reckless, but I prefer the King James that said strange children. When he used the word strange, it's not about being strangers. It's not that they are from another country. It's not that they are coming from another, uh, another place. The word strange in that place, it's talking about children whose character whose lifestyle baffles everything. Children that you expect to be, to turn out well, but they turn out the other side. It's very strange. Very strange. Children that everything, they call sweet things, sweet things bitter. It is bitter things that look sweet in their mouths. The right direction to take is not the way they want. The Bible said, these strange children whose mouth speaks vanity, they speak empty but bogus words. Their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. My brother, my sister, if you want to join me in prayer, God must read you from such people. You can't keep company with strange children. You can't keep company with children who even when they are speaking, they are speaking falsehood. They will speak big things, they will speak vanity, but their lives is completely a life of falsehood. They are pretending. Some of them come to you and say, oh, I'm reading medicine in so and so university. Meanwhile, he has gone nowhere. Some, they are in the, in, the, in the cartel doing 419. You see them in the campus, they don't plan to graduate because they did not come to the campus to graduate. They came to the campus to cause confusion. When the exam is coming, they are the ones to propose riot so that nobody will write the exam. You see then that one carrying placard. We no go green, we no go green, we no go green. It doesn't cost them anything. Even if the university is closed down for two sessions, they are going nowhere. It was you that have a destiny to fulfill that your years must not be wasted. You can't keep company with strange children. So you are going to say, read me, read me, deliver me from the hand of strange children. Whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. Even you yourself, you can't keep company with wrong people and arrive where you are going in life. So, as even though this prayer is coming from a very, very, very deep body of heart, yet for you that you are involved, you that must keep company with 
young people of your own age. You need to take note that you can't keep company with these men and women that are strange. You need to be able to define where is my part in life? Who can I company with? Who can I go with? Who is going in my direction? Who has the same passion that I have that I can run with? Now, but look at the issues that I actually want to face you with in verse 12, in verse 13, in verse 14, in verse 15. I want you to follow me. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. Listen. The word grown up is what has attracted my attention in that passage. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. Grown up. They are not babies. They are not childish. They are thinking as grown-ups even in their youth. You know why is that important? The local proverb says, if you plan and prepare to be mad and it takes you 20 years to plan madness, when will you demonstrate that madness? My brother, if you spend donkey years being undecided, not grown up about what you want to be in life, when will you have space to actually actualize your vision for living? So the need to be grown up while you are young is very critical. This grown up I'm talking about, I'm not talking about chronological age. I'm talking about maturity in time. Maturity when it is relevant. If you are going to get a degree, if you don't have any other reason that is delaying you, there was no need for you to be pushing a degree that should be four-year degree and you are spending eight years with it. You have no business spending donkey years doing what you could have finished in three years. Whatever is making you to waste away like that is wasting your youth, is wasting your capacity. That our sons may be as plants grown up, grown up in their youth. I know a lot of people want to be grown up when they are now old. No, excuse me, it is nothing big to say you are grown up when you are already old. If you are not grown up at that time, what, will you, what, do, what do you want to be? But the purpose of God for you is that now while you are yet young, get your onions. Get your professional qualification. Get understanding and become matured about what you are to pursue. And as we were speaking about that, Brother Patrick was leading us in prayer this morning. And was speaking about a young man like Daniel. They were still young when the Bible said, when they were tested, all the astrologers of Babylon, none of them come near them at all. They were ten times better than all the astrologers in Babylon. How did they achieve that? The Bible said God gave them knowledge, gave them skills in the understanding of all science, all the subjects that they were tested in, the Bible said, God gave them skill that our sons may be grown up while they are young in their youth. Can I ask? For you to fulfill the kind of 
purpose that heaven is planning for you. We cannot afford that you are still roaming about when you are uh, about 35, 36, 37, you have not settled into anything. Even if, yes, you had some setback in life that some of you are saying, but yes, I didn't know this truth on time. I didn't know this truth on time. Now that you are knowing it, settle down. Now that you are knowing it, focus and say, oh God, my years are almost finishing. Maximize my years. Maximize my opportunity. Maximize my, my space where I can actually walk and be what you want me to be. That our sons might be like plants grown up in their youth. And our daughters, that our daughters, look at what the Bible said about the daughters, what they should be. That our daughters, may be as cornerstones polished the other version say sculptured after the similitude of a palace that our daughters they are sculptured they are they are carved as cornerstones as pillars that are that are fit for the palace while they were still young their sister, what is the meaning of this? That means for you to be what God wants to be, the youthful years must be made productive. Don't let your youthful years be used for playfulness. God's intention for your life is that while you are still young, you are already in the army of the Lord. While you are still young, you are engaging, you are engaging, even with top, top, top leaders, you can stand in the palace. It was interesting that by the time Daniel finished, he could stand before the king. He could stand before all the potentates. To the point that when he began to speak, nobody could resist the wisdom with which he spoke. And before you know it, he was advanced to become the first of the three vice presidents in Babylon. For whatever issue that was arising, Daniel had a way of connecting with God to get solution for their land. And I wanted to know, please. As I'm talking about Daniel, you might think that maybe Daniel was one pastor in a local church. No. Daniel was a man of prayer, was a man that dealt with uh, practical issues. He was in politics. He was in governance. And yet, he never missed his prayers three hours a day. When he wanted to fast, he could fast for three weeks. And yet, it was in government. So we are talking of people that carry a life, the life that Christ has created in them, and they are standing as light and as the sword in every place they go in their profession. So I'm asking you to look at that, that our sons are like plants grown up in their youth. Our daughters, they're like, like, like corner pieces, sculptured for the palace able to stand before kings, able to bring about, you know, the highest productivity. He said that our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen <clears throat> may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in, no going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yes, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Now, even if you are going to grow, when do we want you to be grown up? While you are yet young. While you are still agile. Not when you become fragile. While you are still capable. Not when you have become incapacitated. When do we want you to be a victor? 
now, now, now that you are young, that's when you must win all the battles so that you can be a captain for a long time in life. Now, can we quickly now take a quick illustration while time will not allow me to do much this time, but no problem, we'll go ahead later. Let's take an illustration. And the illustration I want you to look at now is Josiah, Jeremiah, and Jephthah. No, Jetta. We spoke about Jetta yesterday, the son of Brother Gideon. Now, we were told that Jetta, even though his father has already captured Zeba and Zamuna, and all the army were already standing, and there was nowhere these two men can escape. They have actually been captured. Their hands have been tied. And they have been brought to the place of execution. And all that Gideon, who was very, very confident about his son, Jetha, was expecting Jetha to do say, he just told him, say, Jetha, oh yeah, slain these people. And the Bible said the young man could not draw the sword because he was a youth. They said because he was a youth. But can you imagine that Josiah was a youth? When he began to seek the Lord, he was a young man. When he began to break down all the bars, all the altars that his own father built, that brought the children of Israel to confusion. He started breaking them down. He was only 20 years. So the question is not that I'm a youth. We are now talking about what is it that you must catch. I've talked about you being grown up now that you are young. How do you grow up now that you are young? We saw that Jetha sought the Lord. In fact, they found the Bible for him and he read it, he copied it out by himself. He took time to, to immerse himself in the word of God. Whatever he was going to do, he had studied, he knew what God was saying concerning him. As a young man, what are you spending your time to do? What are you reading? While I do not uh, say you should not read novels, novels that may uh, enhance your veracity of knowledge, if it has to do with, with your profession, but when I see you reading novels that are just erotic, things that only blow your mind and put you in fictitious condition of life, you are always... You are, because you are reading fiction, yourself you are becoming fictitious. You are not dealing with reality. You are being carried away by some people who sit somewhere to tell a story that never existed. And that has preoccupied you. You that cannot read your, your textbooks, you can read novels of 780 something pages and you are finished it in three days. You are addicted to foolish things. But look at this man. He gave himself to the study of the word of God that will give him principles for living, principles for governance. If you are going to grow up like Ezra, Ezra determined to study the word of God, to practice it, and then to teach it. When you look at these men, they took time. Even when we talk about Daniel, he took time, you know the Bible said, by the study of the books, he came to discover the 70 year captivity that was prophesied. And so he could set himself to say, Lord, am I not raised to pray for this captivity to finish? And I could see him walking hard, praying, seeking God's face, until it happened. Now, when we talk about Jetha, 
and we compare him with Josiah, and we now compare him with Jeremiah. I, would, I want you to see what God said about Jeremiah here. God said to Jeremiah, don't say I'm a youth. Permit me to ask you to look at that Jeremiah again. He said, don't say I'm a youth. You will go to everywhere I have sent you. All the people have ordained that you are going to meet, you will get to them. Stop saying I'm a youth. Please let me note it with you. But the Lord said to me, do not say I'm a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. The Bible said of Jetta, he was afraid. Afraid of who? Afraid of people that their hands are already tied? Afraid of people that have been captured? His father was standing there. The soldier men were behind. These people have already been actually dis disarmed. And all he needed to do was just to, 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 just to shoot them down. And that would have been the end. He was afraid because he had no inner strength. He did not develop his inner man. And you remember that Brother Google was leading us in prayer yesterday. That as a man is, so is his strength. If you are not a man that is growing inside, grown up inside, studying the word of God and learning Christ, if you are just dealing with frivolous things, when it is time for you to arise, you are likely to be afraid. God was saying to him, do not say I'm a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces. I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Now, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. To whom was God speaking? Jeremiah who was a youth. Jeremiah, when he was still young, God was saying, I have set you up to root out, to pull down, but it will be by the word of God in your mouth. Now, who are you supposed to be while you are yet young? One that is developing the inner man. One that is saying, oh God, there's a destiny for me to fulfill. And I need my two legs. I need my strength to do it. When Yonela was leading us in prayer, she was referring to, the, to, to Jacob, who had an encounter with God but wasted it. Instead of him to understand that the ladder that God is bringing to me here, I need to maximize it, he, he, he rather went his way. And it took another 20 years before God could bring him back to that better. And at that point, he had to be dislocated. He was now leaning, you know, on his staff. Thank God that he finally came into the will of God. But I know it is not the will of God that he will be, you know, crippled before he enters into the purpose of God for his life. My brother, my dear sister, as a young person that you are, you may have been married, but your marriage is still young. Your family is still young. Can the two of you, husband and wife, get on your knees and say, God, so why did you create us? What is the destiny we must pursue and fulfill in our lifetime? If you are already in a professional uh, development, can you pray and say, Lord, I don't want to spend donkey years before I get to the climax of this professional qualification so that I can get ready to fulfill my destiny? I don't want just to be playing about and my years are rolling and by the time I'm hitting, I was already ready for retirement. Can I see young people here today as we go before God in prayer to say, oh God, as you help Jeremiah, as you help Josiah, as you help Mary, 
I was going to talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was engaged. She was in courtship with Brother Joseph. But you see, the destiny that God had for that girl, it was spoken earlier in the book of Isaiah, said, a virgin will conceive and bring forth a man-child. Even though that was written many, many years ago as a prophetic utterance, it was for her that that prophecy was going to be fulfilled. And by the time God was looking, where is this girl that was ordained to fulfill this purpose, that was born for this purpose? And God sent an angel and went to their village and encountered our sister there. Thank God. She was a, 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 a young lady that was seeking God that could understand. When the angel greeted her, I said, what manner of greeting is that? What manner of greeting is that? And why that discussion went on? The Bible said, she said, be it unto me according to thy word. And that's how we are seeing people that fulfill their destiny. The fact that you are in country with a brother is not a reason for you to defy yourself. God may have something for your life to do. You don't have to defy yourself. I thank God that we could talk about these people who, while they were yet young, they began to know the Lord. They began to discover their destiny. And they were growing up to fulfill it. As I stop here for, for this time for me and you to pray, can I ask you to get on your knees and to go before God in this critical moment and to say, Lord Jesus, even though I am young, there's a reason why I was born. And there's a reason why I have become born again. Open my eyes to see it. And help me from this moment, this afternoon, to begin to pursue it. Help me to begin to run after it. Number two, whatever I'm going to be, I must be grown up for it. Accelerate my growth, oh God. Accelerate my development. Things that I'm supposed to accomplish in three years, it must not become seven years in my hand. What I need to finish in five years, I don't want to do it in ten years. Lord, whatever you will do to accelerate my life, accelerate me. Would you like to pray and say, oh God, all those that cause distraction on my path, strange children, strange relationship, strange ideologies, rid me of them and help me to walk in the right path. Our brother already introduced to you the matter of discipleship. A training to make you ready for your destiny. Can you pray also and say, oh God, now that I'm young, please help me to take upon myself the yoke of discipleship. When we come later, you are going to lay all of this before God and say, now Lord, this cycle is coming gradually to an end. Do not allow me to miss the expectation of heaven over my life. Please bow your head. Call on God. Whether you are in your corner, please kneel down and pray. Whether you are in the midst of others, please forget all others around you and call on God for yourself this moment. And search out. Search out. What am I afraid of? What is it that is making me timid when I ought to hold onto my father? Call on God, and the Lord will answer us now. And as you are praying, it is possible that the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you since, and the first person you need to respond to is the Lord Jesus, and to say, Lord, Lord Jesus, if I don't know you, how will I know my destiny? If I don't know you, how will I grow up to fulfill the call of God on my life? If I don't know you, how will I become what I'm supposed to be? How will I not drift away? Lord Jesus, draw me closer to yourself. 
And this may be another decision you must make now. To say, Lord, please take over my life. I want to surrender to you. I want to fulfill the reason I was born. I want to, I don't want just to pass through life. I don't want just to be washed away just like that. Father, anchor my life in your divine purpose, even this moment. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. And are you asking God to link you up with those who can help you to grow well? Please ask God and say, Father, direct my path from this meeting. Direct my path from this meeting. Help me, Lord, to be located right. Help me to walk into the will of God for my life. Father, thank you for this time. And thank you for your children. Thank you for each one praying in their various locations. I ask, Lord, that you withdraw close to us. I ask, Father, that whatever stagnates or strangulates any of their growth, please take it away. That our sons may be grown up in their youth and our daughters might be like sculptured pillars, good only for the palace. Please do this for us and cause your will to prosper in their lives even from this hour. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank, Thank the Lord, Lord for...